I should put makeup on. Oh well. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and this is Constellation Library. I'm so happy that you are here. Um, today I am just being comfortable. We have a book haul. It is pretty hefty. I would say it's about 47-ish books, I think is what I counted. So somewhere between 40 and 50. It's a lot of fucking books. I um, have not bought this many books in such a short span of time in several years. I recently purged and unhauled a big old box of books. Um, and apparently, I guess I needed to refill the gaps that were left subconsciously or something because I wasn't intending to buy all of this it just kind of happened so I have done my best to split it up into different genres or age groups I have a few graphic novels I have a few adult books I have one nonfiction. I have middle grade young adult and adult um, all fantasy mostly the genres but it's all kind of mixed together and so we're just going to kind of work our way through it. I would advise you to get a snack, get a beverage, something like that. I am just going to say it now that I don't know everything about all these books. So there may be some I hold up that I have like so somewhat that I have somewhat of a synopsis for. But there's going to be a lot that I hold up that I'm like, mm, I don't really know much about this one at all. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first section we're going to do is graphic novels because it's really small and just to get that one out of the way. So the first graphic novel is Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane. And this one was a gift from my dear friend Shelby over at What's My Page Again. And it was a Christmas gift. So pretty much all these books have been purchased since Christmas. Um, and this particular one, I think it's super cute. It looks like it's a Halloween read. As far as I'm aware, this girl, she is a little goblin and she's a witch and she has adventures and it's very October festive Halloween time. I love this skeleton with this tiny little witch's hat. I have so many questions and this little blob is super cute. So yeah, I know very little about this other than it is Halloween-y and it's goblin-y and it's got witches and whatnot. The next one is one that I've been waiting for for a while because I've read the rest of the series and that is volume five of Monstrous. Um, I really don't know how to explain this particular series. It is, it's just really good. So Basically, this series is about a war that is very close to happening between humans and Arcanics. Arcanics are mammalian, animalistic, what's the word I'm looking for? Anthropomorphic animal humanoid creatures and then against the humans and there's like a battle that is very close to being waged between the two and our main character, I believe, is half arcanic maybe and she also has the ability to um commune with this ancient spirit this god i think that's like potentially evil but it's like a morally gray character like they're evil but they're also like not as evil as you think they would be and um it's just it, I, I don't know how else to explain it. You just need to read it. If you haven't read it yet, and a lot of people have, it's really popular right now. I would definitely recommend it. I really, really like it. I have not read this one yet. I bought it like a couple weeks ago. I was finishing up some other things, but I am going to hopefully get to this one in April. So the next ones that I have, they're a series. I already had number two um, because it was the only one that I could find. This series is not widely distributed. You can't really find it just anywhere. Um, your small little comic book shops are more likely to have it. I actually had missed out on the first one totally, the first volume of this totally, and ended up getting the second one and then had to just get individual issues past that because I couldn't find any of the graphic novels. So the series, let me get the first one here. There are six in the series. I only have five. The sixth one is just also really hard to find it's on Amazon but it's going to take like two months to ship and I just wasn't interested in doing that for some reason so Lady Mechanica um 
kind of obscure. I don't think a lot of people know this one. The art in it is very much through the male gaze. If that is something that bothers you, you probably don't want to read this one. It's kind of like a steampunk female Sherlock Holmes assassin femme fatale kind of situation. The art is gorgeous, but again, all the women in it are busty, thin-waisted, hippie, beautiful um, sorts of designs. And I know that some people really have an issue with that. I don't have as much of an issue with that. I do think that sometimes it is okay, but it's definitely this entire series is like that. So the story itself, I really, really like. I really think the art is beautiful. So for example, I'm going to open up to a random page and just kind of show you what we're working with here. So here's an example of the art. So you get full spreads where it's like showcasing your female characters, which some people, again, don't really super like, but I super like it. So yeah, definitely recommend it though. If, like I said, if you're into the steampunk Sherlock Holmes lady assassin, she's like a robotic sort of person. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely check that out. The first one is just Lady Mechanica. The second one is the Tablet of Destinies. The third one is the Lost Boys of West Abbey. The fourth one is the Clockwork Assassin. And the fifth one is French La Belle Dame Saint Merci. I'm sure I said that terribly. That is the fifth one. And then the sixth one, I believe, is set in more of a uh, Latin sort of environment. The author creator is Joe Benitez. And yeah. And so they got overarching, like over all of them, there's a story, but there's also like individual for each volume. There's like its own kind of contained story as well. I really, really like them. They're some of my favorites. Well, that is all of the graphic novels. So the next section is going to be the adult. I'm also just going to go ahead and start with the nonfiction that I have because there's only one of them. And that is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doughty. She is the mortician who runs the Ask a Mortician YouTube channel. She is pretty amazing. And this book has lots to teach you about the, the death industry in general. Obviously, trigger warnings for all things related to death. There are trigger warnings for infant death, child death. Um, various states of decomposition, um, just all of that. Guys, would you stop? Stop it. Leave her alone. I have one female cat and three male cats, and they literally just cannot leave her alone, and I don't understand why she doesn't do anything to any of them. And it's not even that they're, like, being mean all the time, but they've been mean enough to her that she just assumes any time they're around her they're being mean. So if you hear her growling, that's that's why. She's getting in the window right now, so hopefully that will be helpful. Anyway, back to the book. So this one, very good. It was triggering. There's a part that talks about cremating babies that I had to skip over because of my own personal history. Um, so don't feel like you have to read. You know, if it starts getting too hard, put it down. But I am a morbid person by nature. I find this sort of thing very interesting, and I really liked it. But it's not for everybody. The next three books are just like basic fiction, um, adult, you know, fiction. The first one is kind of like a modern classic, and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And I will just go ahead and say that a very large majority of these books that I bought, I saw on Alexandra Roseland's channel. So I will link her in the description box. She's amazing. She has the most perfect editing. Her personality is great. She's like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. I absolutely adore her. Um, and just if she tells me to get a book, I'm just going to get the book. So yeah. Um, but this one, basically the premise of this is it reminds me a little bit of Jane Eyre. You have your main character, which we never learn her actual name. It's not ever said, but she marries someone named Maxime de Winter and um, finds out that he had a late wife named Rebecca. And there are lots of secrets about Rebecca that come to light. And there's like a sinister housekeeper and the house itself just feels kind of evil. And 
the second Misty Winter, our main character, is just dealing with understanding all the secrets and truths of the house and her husband and his previous wife and all of that. It sounds really creepy. I am super interested in getting to this one sooner rather than later, but I'm honestly kind of a mood reader. I set TBRs, but I, I don't make any sort of assumptions that I'm actually going to stick with those. The next adult book is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And this is another Lexi recommendation. And it's just like, I don't really know a lot about it. I know that there is like life and death, I believe. And there's a library that exists kind of in between those things. And I believe that the main character goes to this library and reads about her life in books and how it could have been. Um, and she has to kind of like work through and make decisions for herself and maybe undo some of her past decisions and try to create the life that she wants. But there's also danger that comes with some of the choices that she makes. So that's my assumption. That could have been a really bad description. I don't know, but it's short. I would like to get to this one maybe in April. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about it and I think it's going to make me cry. I don't cry like super, super easily. But I do, as I've gotten older, as I've had children, and I'm just a softie, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one made me cry. The final basic fiction book that I have is actually a, I'm assuming it would be considered a thriller, but it is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And this book is a Jane Eyre retelling, actually. Um, if you've read Jane Eyre, then obviously The Wife Upstairs, you know. If you haven't, this is a spoiler. Sorry, but it is. Um, it is a... I mean, that's really all I know is it's just a retelling of Jane Eyre, but set in a more modern time, which is fine with me. I love Jane Eyre. It's one of my most favorite classics. So I hope that this one, it's much shorter than the actual uh, Jane Eyre novel. So I'm hoping that it lives up to uh, the hype of Jane Eyre and lives up to my expectations of what it's going to be. It was my final book of the month pick. I ended up canceling my book of the month, not because there's anything wrong with it. I just personally... Most of the books they have are not to my taste. I prefer fantasy and um, I'm not really like a big romance reader and I like some thrillers, but I'm kind of picky about it. So it was just, I was spending money on it or skipping months when I didn't need to buying books. I'm like, oh, this one sounds okay, I guess for me. But yeah, that's not to deter anybody. If you like book of the month, by all means continue using it. It just didn't really work for me. So this is my last one from that. Okay, so we've done graphic novels. We've done the like hodgepodge nonfiction adult. So I think the next thing that we are going to do is kind of go in like age order. So the first section is middle grade and there are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 middle grade here. 90% of these are definitely Alexi recommendations because that's her thing. She is the middle grade queen um, and we, we stand a queen for sure. I'll set these all right here in front of me. All right, so the first three are part of a series, and I've actually read all of them. Um, and I'm going to do a video about what I've read so far this year, and I'll be talking about at least the first two in that video. The third one I read this month, which will be in my monthly wrap up. I actually listened to these on audiobook. The audiobooks were pretty good, I thought. Um, but I bought the UK covers of them because I liked them better in their paperback. And so those are the. City of Ghosts, Tunnel of Bones, and Bridge of Souls, which is the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. And I love V.E. Schwab. I haven't read all of her work. I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and I really loved that, um, which I believe that I read that in January. So I will be talking about that on my um, What I Read So Far This Year video so I'm not gonna go too much into that but I did really enjoy that one and I have loved so much loved this series I cannot recommend it enough anybody would enjoy this even if you're not middle grade it's really creepy each of the locations in the books are actual locations I believe that the e. Schwab has visited and so she knows them really well um, I have visited the location for the third one but this one City of Ghosts is set in Edinburgh and I know that Schwab has spent time there and the Tunnel of Bones is set in Paris and the Paris Catacombs. And then the third one is Bridge of Souls, which is set in New Orleans. I'm not going to go too much into this. Um, uh, basically, this story is about a girl 
who is named Cassidy Blake. She's young. I'm going to say maybe she's like 12 or 13 years old and she can see ghosts. She had a brush with death and almost died and she was actually saved by a boy named Jacob who turns out to be a ghost himself and they're kind of tied together after that and so Jacob is her best friend. He is in each of the books and um, so she's able to pass between the veil of the living and the dead and when she goes through the veil she is able to see ghosts and she can hear them when she's not in the veil so when she goes in between the veil she's able to speak to the ghosts she's able to um, see what they see and live through their moment the last moments of their life her parents are actually ghost hunters they have a tv show her mom is the one who believes in the ghost her dad is more the one who believes in the history of it and so the reason why she's going to all these places is because her parents are filming uh, a show called The Inspectors, I believe, which is essentially a ghost, like a kind of a highbrow ghost hunting type show. They're not like out, it's not like ridiculous or unbelievable. It's more about like the education side of it, which I thought was really cool. So it's not, to me, it's, it's not corny. It's showing you the history and telling you the stories of like the legends and whatnot that go with it is the show that her parents are doing. And so because of that she goes all these different places these very haunted places and it's just it's so well done and again I'll gush more about this series later but definitely recommend and I had to have had to have these books I just the red and black motif is just the way pretty much all of the E. Schwab's books are except for the life of Addie LaRue I just had to had to get the ones that matched the next book is another one that I actually already own and have read, but I love this cover and I thought this was out of print, but it's not. And it is called The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. And I really love this book. John Connolly typically writes adult crime thrillers, but he has dabbled a little bit in younger audiences. And so there's this one. And then there's the Gates series, which has three books in it that I've also owned and read. This one is basically about a boy. His mother dies, his father remarries quickly. He's not coping super well with that. And um, he ends up being pulled into a world that is alongside our own and discovers that pretty much all the stories that he has read has come to life. Like all the fairy tales of like the woodcutter and different things like that he discovers are legit. And while he's there, he's trying to find the king as well as a book of lost things, which is supposed to help him get back to his own world. And adventure ensues and danger and all that sort of stuff it's very entertaining I really love it it's the perfect kind of fairy tale type story um and I just I love this cover I just think it's gorgeous and it was in the middle grade section which the main character is young but I just I didn't realize that this would be considered middle grade um to me it felt more like an adult novel with just a young protagonist the next few um are just mostly firsts in several series that I am interested in reading or that I purchased for my husband. My husband is a big fan of middle grade. So I bought several, these next four actually, I bought specifically for him because I know he likes to read long series and he likes middle grade. And all of these, for the most part, our series are going to have more books. So the first one is, pretty much everyone knows this one. It's The School for Good and Evil and it's by Soman Chainani. I, again, probably butchered that, apologies, but, um, this one most people know there are two girls one of them kind of looks like your preppy princessy type girl the other one is more of like your goth emo type of girl and the school of good and evil has two separate schools one for like heroes and princesses and all of that and the other for like darkness and villains and all of that and the two girls seem like obvious fits for both of those schools but what ends up happening is they have to swap and the princess girl goes to the school for evil and the emo girl goes to the school for good. And so other than that, they, you know, have a lot of adventures and whatnot. And there are probably like six plus books in the series. So we'll see. If I like it, obviously I'll continue with the series. If my husband likes it, he will. One of us needs to like it in order to continue. Otherwise, you know, I will donate it or... I, mean, I might leave it on the shelf for my son. He'll uh, eventually, he's only four months old now, but at some point he'll be old enough to read books like that. So I'll probably just keep them for him. The next book is called Bright Storm and it is by Vashti Hardy. 
I really don't know much about this other than like airships and I'm pretty sure that there are siblings. Their dad, I believe he dies on an expedition and they end up trying to figure out what happened to him and so I believe there's something that happened where it's like a story comes out that he was trying to sabotage another explorer and his reputation is ruined and so um, they have to try to figure out if that's actually true and try to save the reputation of their father as well. I believe that there's a second book in this series and I'm sure that they'll probably end up being more. It'll probably be at least a trilogy but it just seemed really interesting. I love airships. That's like if something has airships in it I really want to read it. <laughs> Don't know why but it's one of those things it's like ooh instant buy. Add to cart. The next one is Malamander and it is by Thomas Taylor. This one is really young. It's got like pictures and stuff. I haven't read a book this young in a while but it just seemed really cute. Another Lexi recommendation and I don't know really anything about it. I think the Malamander is like a humanoid creature. It's not like folklore of this place. I don't know. <coughs> hmm. It's not the Rona, I promise. So yeah, um, I feel like it's kind of a seafaring, swashbuckling type story. So we'll see. It's definitely cute. It's not super long and the text is, you know, pretty big. So I think I could get through it with relative ease and quickness. The next one has like eight books or it's got some obscene amount of books in it in the series and it is Keeper of the Lost Cities. This one is by Shannon Messenger and this particular series just on the back I can see that there are seven. So yeah, it has several and it's, it's pretty thick. I mean, it's one of those middle grades, you know, they're just getting to where they're reading longer books and they're so long and big and chunky and you're drawn to the chunky books. At least I was when I was younger. And it seems like it is something that would be interesting to me. The main character is telepathic and I believe that she meets somebody else who is telepathic and she didn't know that anyone else, you know, existed like her. So she was kind of an outcast and she figures out that there is somewhere that she belongs but comes to find out that like she has secrets and memory that is going to be revealed and might give her some insight into where she came from and why she belongs in this place. But I think that this one has really excellent cover art. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And there are lots of others. So again, another one of those. Read the first one. See how I feel about it. Maybe we'll continue. Maybe we won't. All right, so the next one is a Lexi recommendation, and the cover is just gorgeous, and it is The in Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone. It is by Jacqueline Moriarty. This cover, guys, like, <laughs> I don't mean to judge books by the cover, but it's really difficult not to when they are this beautiful. I hope the book is as good as the cover. Basically, all I know about it is that um, Bronte's parents end up dying. They are adventurers. They leave her as a baby with one of her aunts. And then after they die and their will, there's instructions for her to visit all these different aunts that live across the world and bring them gifts. Um, and she just has adventures when she goes to visit all of these people and, um, you know, learns that there's a little bit more to it than just delivering the treasures. What that something is, I don't know. Maybe it's the friends we make along the way. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, and the final middle grade book is one that I have heard won the Newbery Medal Award, I think. I think Lexi mentioned this one as well. I told you there's gonna be a lot in here that Lexi recommended, but that is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. This one is based on Korean folklore, I believe. And I'm fairly certain the main character has a grandmother who is ill and they are visited by a tiger and the tiger says I can heal your grandmother but I need whatever she stole back to be given back to us um, don't really know what it is that she stole but they need it back in order to get it in order to heal so the tiger wants our main character I believe her name is Lily yes they want Lily to return the item that her grandmother stole and in return, they will heal her grandmother. But in Korean folklore, legend says that you should never trust a tiger. You should never make a deal with a tiger. Um, 
because they're never what they seem. You never know what is actually going to happen. You can't, you just can't trust them. So I'm interested to see what happens, what Lily chooses to do and what it means for her family and whether the folklore is true. Can she trust the tiger or not? I guess we'll have to see. But this one doesn't have the Newberry Medal on the cover, but um, I trust Lexi. She said she's fairly certain that it was a winner. So I'm sure that we'll start seeing more of that printed on these. So that was middle grade. We're moving right along because I tried to film this a couple days ago and I just couldn't speak and it was late and my lighting was all fucked up, which the lighting is not great now. You're probably hearing the lawnmower outside. It is what it is. All right, so we are going to do YA next. And I am going to, at the end of the YA section, gonna go with a set of books that kind of is in the middle between YA and adult fantasy. Um, Cause I have the whole series and we'll just do that then. So the first YA novel that we're going to look at is Nixia by Scott Reinken. So some of the recommendations on the back of this say that it is similar to Illuminae, which I really, really liked. I know it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but I really enjoy it. So basically this book is about a main character named Emmett Atwater. He lives in Detroit on Earth and he was selected to be one of 10 recruits to go to this planet and mine this substance called Nixia, which is super volatile and is very valuable and um, there's a lot of training sessions and a bit, basically he's trying to be the best one and mine the most, I guess, from what I gathered off the synopsis. Um, but the more time he spends there, he starts questioning like why he's doing this, what are the intentions, what's the full purpose? And he essentially has to make a choice between like getting rich or compromising himself. And he doesn't want, I'm assuming, to compromise himself but we'll see maybe he maybe he wants to get rich i don't know um but it is the first in a series the next one is called nixia unleashed and then there is a third one that i can't remember the name of right now but again this one three bucks at the bookstore not super long if i hate it it's no big deal because it was like nothing so the next set of books are the first two in a series. I'm pretty sure that there are more coming out. I actually have the first one from a Book of the Month subscription, but one thing that always frustrated me about Book of the Month is that they're a different size than other books. Like if that you, for instance, get a YA book in the Book of the Month subscription, it's gonna be really tall compared to the rest of the YA books that you have. So that frustrated me. Um, my cat's right here. This is Sherlock. Hi, Sherlock, you blend into my sweater. Um, anyway. The first one is The Beautiful, the second one is The Damned, and these are by Renee Adier. I really don't know anything about these books other than Vampires in New Orleans, which, let's be real, is really overdone, but I'm not reading these for like quality literature per se. They may end up being really good, but it's the experience of Vampires in New Orleans. I think the main character is perhaps a fugitive trying to escape a previous life and I believe that she gets mixed up in this vampire underworld. So the covers are gorgeous. They give me Twilight vibes, honestly, like especially this one with the red on the black and this one's just super pretty. I believe that there's more coming after this, but I'm really not sure. I got these ones for cheap also at Second and Charles. All right, the next one is a sequel. I have not read the first one. And again, I don't know much about either of them, but I saw it and I was like, well, I got the first one. Um, but it is called This Cruel Design and it is the sequel to This Mortal Coil and it is by Emily Saveda. I'm fairly certain that this one is similar to Illuminae as well and has like artificial intelligence and potentially that artificial intelligence becomes sentient, similar to Aiden in Illuminae. And I, when I bought this Mortal Coil, I had just finished reading Illuminae. So it just sounded so fucking interesting to me at that point because I really, really enjoyed my time reading that series, The Illuminae Chronicles. Loved, loved them. Um, so I have a lot of high hopes for the other one, but I just, I don't know, didn't end up getting to it. So this one, I <laughs> won't be getting to for a while either. I obviously I'll need to read the first one, but this was cheap. It was like eight bucks at the thrift store. So, yeah. 
All right, the next one in my YA stack is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kimmerer. This one was on my February or March TBR. I don't remember. I think it was on February, but I didn't finish it till March, so it has ended up being on my March TBR. And um, it is the third book in the Curse So Dark and Lonely series, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's really all you need to know. I think it's done pretty well. It definitely deviates from the plot line of Beauty and the Beast and goes in its own direction, which I appreciate. I enjoyed the series. I finished this one. I'll be talking about it in my wrap up. Um, was it the best series I've ever read? No. Was it entertaining? Yes. Would I recommend it? Yes. I do think that if you like Beauty and the Beast retellings, you'd probably like this. But as always, we'll go into more detail during the wrap up. Okay, so the next book in the YA portion of this video is called The Beast Player by Nahako Uihashi. I don't know really anything about this book. I believe it has something to do with like, I really don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese and I apologize for that. I need to do a little bit of research on the author to see um, where it originated. I know that it is a translated work and I'm fairly certain that it is based in like folklore of its whatever, whichever culture it comes from and the main character is able to communicate with these beasts that she is supposed to be um, caring for. I know that there is like a threat of war and I know that the main character experiences loss which pushes her in a direction and the trajectory of the story but really I don't know a whole lot more about it. Um, I bought this one mostly for my husband because he loves anything Japanese or Chinese or any of that like he really enjoys the different anime and I just I saw this cover and I immediately thought that would be a really cool anime I don't know if it is um but I thought of him because I'm sure he'll absolutely adore this and the cover of the second book which is called the beast warrior if I get close enough it just like looks really cool I don't know so we'll see like I said I don't know much about it I hope it's a good translation I know sometimes translations kind of suck um I'm sure the original work, if I knew the language, would be fine, but just occasionally when stuff gets translated to English, things are lost in translation, so hopefully that's not the case. The next book, and one that I have highly anticipated and have heard pretty much nothing but good things about, is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, and this is very inclusive in terms of like trans representation because the main character is trans. I know that he's trying to prove himself and show that he is actually a brujo to his family and get their acceptance and he ends up resurrecting the spirit of this guy which i believe his name let me see what it says so y yadriel I, I sorry not sure he is the main character and he summons the ghost of someone named julian and i believe that shit ensues after that and there comes a point when it's like Yadriel has to decide if he's going to send Julian back, but like they've developed feelings for each other, I think. I don't know. That's what I gathered, at least just off the synopsis, but I don't know a ton about it. I have heard, my, really the only negative thing that I've heard is that it can be kind of predictable, but like I don't really care about that as long as I have an enjoyable time. Like if it follows a formula, that doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people, but I'm not some people. So very excited for that one. The next one speaks to my English major heart, and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai. And the main characters are from, I believe, Opposing Gangs in 1926. And it just sounds so good it sounds so good I love the idea I'm pretty sure the main character's name is Juliet the love interest is Roma so Roma and Juliet I really really hope that this doesn't end the same way Romeo and Juliet does but I'm obviously going to expect that it will it is not a one book situation there's already a second book that should be coming out at some point in the next year and I just really hope I like this. I have high expectations for it because I love Romeo and Juliet. I know that it's like the Shakespeare play that everybody knows, but I just, I super enjoy it. So hopefully the people in this one aren't as young as Romeo and Juliet are though. I would like them to be aged up a bit. Oh, well, we're working our way right along. Only got like three more in this deck. And then on to the adult. 
So the next book YA is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And this one has found its way all over booktube. I've been seeing it everywhere and as far as I know the main character in this novel ends up being written into some billionaire's will and inheriting all of his money. And she ends up moving to the house that he left her, but his family is still there. His like grandsons. And I think that there's some like weird competition that's supposed to happen. And you know, everybody in his, this billionaire's family thinks that she's like a fraud and that she has essentially, I don't know, like she's a con woman or something like that. And there's a lot of puzzles and riddles and things that have to be solved. It's, I think it might be, I don't know if it's like a whodunit kind of situation or if it's just like a big sort of puzzle game that they are going to figure out why she's the one who inherited it. Um, I don't know, it just, that sounds super interesting. And again, that could be a really terrible description. Other than what I've heard from you guys and what I've read in the synopsis, I really don't know much about this, but it sounds super interesting and I hope that I like it. So the final two, um, the first one I initially thought was fantasy. I don't think it's fantasy. There may be some magical realism in it, but the cover made me think that it was going to be an indigenous fantasy and it's called Firekeeper's Daughter and it is by Angeline Bouli. Bouli. Anyway, um, look at this cover. Like it is, it is gorgeous. Like I saw it at the store and I could not stop looking at it every time I walked by it. And so I had to pick it up. And I was like, what is this about? And as I was reading the back, I'm like, oh, this has to be a fantasy. But the more I read, I think it's like a crime novel uh, set in a uh, indigenous sort of background. Like your main character, I don't think lives on the reservation, but they're very much adjacent to the reservation. And they know a lot about their um, Ojibwe like heritage and everything. And I'm fairly certain that there is like a drug situation that takes place and the main character has to work with the FBI to investigate it because she ends up witnessing a murder related to this drug. And she also, I'm fairly certain, has to kind of pull on her knowledge of Ojibwe native medicine, traditional medicine, and kind of help figure out, you know, what's going on before there are more victims and protect people. So I don't know, it just sounds super interesting and I have been wanting to read more diversely so I'm trying to read books from all kinds of different backgrounds and different heritages and different things like that. So I really hope that I enjoy this one. I think that I will. It sounds very interesting. The cover is great. The synopsis sounds good. So I will just have to wait and see if I like it. And the final YA one I, I saved for last because I know everybody has been losing their shit over this book and that is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Everyone I've been talking to is like black girl magic. It's like really great representation. You got your strong black female character, main character, which I absolutely love. She clearly is wielding like different kinds of magic, which is awesome to me. Um, I believe that her mom dies in an accident and she ends up going to UNC Chapel Hill as like an escape from that and gets attacked on her first night there by like a demon or something and is saved by people called the legend born. So when she gets saved by somebody who calls himself a Merlin and um, he tries to wipe her memory but ends up like awakening her magic and memory that was buried deep down in it was that there was a Merlin at the hospital when her mother died. And so she decides that she's going to kind of infiltrate the legend born and try to figure out what connection they have to her mom and dismantle them from the inside out if she has to. But, but come to find out the legend born are actually descendants of King Arthur's knights and there's like a war coming. So the main character has to decide like, is she going to fuck them up or is she going to join them and help them fight this war? And I think that that sounds so good, so good. And literally I have not heard one bad word about this. Everyone that has talked about it has talked about how amazing it is. And I, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So that's the end of the YA section. As I said, I have a stack of things that kind of bridge the gap between YA and adult. And some people have feelings about these you can probably already guess what they are just by my description of them. But 
I have the whole set of the Akatar series so far. I had read A Court of Thorns and Roses probably back in 2018 and I really liked it at the time. I was unfortunately a Tamlin stan. I really liked Tamlin. Mm. Oh, have a mighty have fallen. Yeah. I reread it and was like, mm, I am curious about this Resand character. He seems a little problematic, but like, that's Sarah J. Moss. Like, that's how she writes her books. She's problematic as fuck. But not like J.K. Rowling level of problematic. Like, this alpha male who's slightly sort of like almost abusive, but like, does it to save you type problematic, which is not good either. But I like it. I like the alpha male character. I can't help it. I have always been drawn to those. I'm sure there's something psychological to explain why, but I don't know. Anyway, read this one again, and then in quick succession, read A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. This book was excellent. It definitely did not have second book syndrome. It was so good. I loved it. Chapter 55 or what the fuck ever was a lot. Um, <laughs> I will say that like I enjoy the smutty scenes in these, but they are extra as fuck and like super overwritten but they're entertaining at least uh the next one this one a lot of people didn't like it as much i found it enjoyable i read it in a couple days um i mean it's your typical getting ready for the final battle type book um i had some qualms with the way that it ended but on the whole i enjoyed it i think that they're all pretty strong personally but i know the second one is much better than the other two and the first one is not as good in my opinion as the last one so really two three and one is the order in which i think they're that i rank them um this one i did not read i probably should i've heard not great things about this one either um court of frost and starlight but i've read the other three so i feel like i should probably read this one i don't know if there's anything you need out of this one before you read a court of silver flames um, somebody's gonna need to let me know because like I don't care to skip it either if I don't need to read it and if it's not that great I don't want to waste my time if it isn't something that gives me a necessary chunk of information that I would need going into A Court of Silver Flames and then obviously Court of Silver Flames I didn't want to get the hardback but my sister-in-law ended up getting ordering this one off Amazon and it was delayed and a friend of hers gave her went to the store and bought a copy of it and brought it to her like release day um, so my husband bought this one off of her and I'm just like, yeah, why not? I will get the paperback if it, you know, looks sort of like these when it comes out. But I didn't super like Nesta. I mean, she was fine. I like a complex character. I can appreciate an unlikable character. I, this is really a lot and I hope that she goes through some character development and isn't such a bitch <laughs> by the end of it, but I don't know. I mean, maybe her being a bitch is just like important and she needs to stay that way I'll accept it but I love Cassian so we'll see hopefully I like it I don't know I was gonna try to read it in March because it came out in March but it just didn't fucking happen I had just blazed through the other three and I was like I need a break from this world for a little bit so that was my in-between because you can see that shelved either in YA or in the adult fantasy section I think it's adult fantasy because there's a lot of sex and I don't really necessarily think that it is young adult oriented. I don't think there's anything wrong with sex scenes in young adult work, but like that's like a lot right on the page and I don't know that, I, I think it might be just a bit much. Anyway. Okay, so the final section is adult fantasy. I'm pretty sure every book in this is fantasy, so yeah. And a lot of it, I used to be really intimidated by adult fantasy because they're just so heckin' thick. But I want to get over that because I'm so interested in reading the stories. So I have purchased several of the first books to different series that I hope to one day read. And I hope to kind of dip my toes in more into like the epic high adult fantasy stuff. But the first one I had is a little slender thing, and it is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I'm actually partway through this one, about halfway. It's super weird. I don't know what's happening in it, really. But the main character, Piranesi, lives in this world. 
and it's called the house and it is just an endless house with different rooms statues in it some of the rooms are have fallen in some of them are flooded and he basically lives in this house and the house provides for him it's very much like a religious sort of situation he almost worships the house and there's another character that also is there called the other and he's like a well-dressed almost like academic sort of person and definitely does not seem like he belongs there where Pierre Nessie is like in rags that he's made himself from what's in the land in the world that he lives in well you come to find out another character arrives and he is called I don't know what if he even has a name no he doesn't have a name yet I think he's referred to as 16 which would make sense once you read it so basically this other character that arrives starts having Piranesi question everything that he knows about the world where he came from what the rest of the world may be if there's more than what he knows and um I think that, that is going to be Kind of a psychological sort of situation as we progress it's already getting weird and i have a lot of questions but again i don't i don't know what's happening most of the time i'm a little confused and i don't know if that's just me maybe i'm just like stupid or something but as i'm reading it i'm like wait what wait what i don't know we'll see it's got really good reviews on goodreads which i know goodreads you can take that with a grain of salt but i hope i like it as much as everybody else seems to the next book is one that I have looked at forever. It is a three book series and I have the first one and I am not sure. I have gone back and forth about whether I wanted to pick it up for a long time and just didn't, but now I decided I'm gonna commit and give it a try. And that is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I only know pretty much that this book is set in Egypt and that is pretty much it magic obviously um I don't I don't really know honestly I, I couldn't tell you I just know a lot of people talk about this one and enjoy it and it I love Egypt I love that whole culture and I just would love to read a fantasy set there so that's what I'm gonna do what is this is this a bird what is happening It's not a bird. That squeaking sound you were hearing. We have a lovely, lovely bulldog that lives next door. His name is Chief and he had a squeaky toy and that's what you were hearing if that was coming through at all. So the next two books are the final two books in a series where I have read the first one actually and that is The Dragon Republic and the Burning God. These ones are the second and third book to the Poppy War series and the Poppy War book fucked me up big time. I talked about it in my last video a little bit. Um, I missed out on all the trigger warnings, so I really had no idea what I was getting into until I was getting into it. Um, and 99% of the book I absolutely loved, but there was one part of it that was like hella triggering for me when I read it. I was not in a good headspace for it. So I stepped away from that series. I think that was 2018. I stepped away from it and it's now 2021. So I'm ready to try again. We'll see if I'm able to. Um, I had this one on my TBR for this month not sure I'm going to get to it. If I don't get to it, we'll just keep trying. But um, school has made it difficult to read kind of chunkier books. So yeah, if you don't know anything about the Poppy War, um, it is basically our main character, Ren. She is a war orphan and her guardians are pretty terrible people like criminals. They work her to the bone. They treat her like she's stupid. And she wants to go to Synagard, which is military academy. It's the most prestigious in the land. And in order to get into Synagard, you have to pass a test. And she wants to study for the test and she almost doesn't get to, but she manages to find someone who's willing to teach her. And so she teaches herself also, learns a lot from her mentor and reads and reads and reads and finally takes the test and passes it and passes it with flying colors and ends up getting into Synagard. And while she's there, she is discriminated against because she is a dark-skinned girl from the country and everyone there for the most part is pale-skinned, wealthy folks that have never had to work a day in their life and who've been training to be in Synagard their entire life. Um, there's a rivalry that happens 
and whatnot as she's training and learning about herself. And then she ends up actually having to go to war towards the end, which shouldn't be a spoiler because the book is called The Poppy War. So, but it's very, very good, but it has some historical elements to it. The war and battle and everything is supposed to be a fictional fictionalization or fantasy representation of a battle called the Rape of Nanjing. Um, admittedly, I don't know much about it. After I read the book, I just kind of stepped away and was like not interested because it's as bad as it sounds. Um, and so yeah, just go into the Poppy War knowing that there's some shit. Look up the trigger warnings before you do. Um, but I've heard it kind of gets like worse. I don't know if that's true, but somebody had told me if I couldn't handle the Poppy War that I shouldn't continue the series. But you know what? I'm a masochist, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a go. We'll see. All right. The next one is a big old heckin' floppy chonk of a book. And that is A Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I have wanted this floppy ass bitch for so long. And I don't know why I took so long to get it, but... Stormlight Archive, again, it's all over booktube right now, and everybody's reading it. I'm just like, you know what? Fine. I will get it. So I got the first one. I think my husband's listening to the audiobook right now. I have the audiobook checked out from the library, so I'm probably going to listen to that while I'm reading it because it is so big. I know absolutely nothing about this other than it's a fantasy, and a lot of people have struggled to even, like, describe it. So we'll just see when I read it what it's about. Um, same story for this one, The Shadow of What Was Lost. It is by James Eilington. This one was a recommendation from Aaron at Booked and Busy. Blah, blah, blah. Booked and Busy? From Aaron at Booked and Busy. Um, there's another one down there that's a recommendation from her as well. But she said this is a really easy beginner introductory sort of book to adult fantasy. So I was like, eh, why not? I like Orbit. I have read some stuff by Brent Weeks and that I believe that Orbit publishes him and I enjoyed those. So I'm like, eh, I trust Orbit. So does Erin. I trust her. I really enjoy her channel. I'll also link her down in the description box. She reads a lot of adult fantasy. So if you want more information on that kind of stuff, then you can check her out. But yeah, this one is also floppy. There's just something about floppy adult fantasy books. Like, I don't know what it is, but I love it. I'm done. Maybe. Maybe. No, I'm not. There's another one down here. <laughs> All right. This next one, also an Erin recommendation, Rage of Dragons. She says this is her favorite fantasy book. I'm fairly certain, unless she's read something since then, <clears throat> to knock it out of the top spot. This is apparently Erin's favorite. It is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Um, I have kind of heard it's like a almost like a gladiator with dragons type situation. I I don't know, like Game of Thrones. I'm not sure, but it, again, floppy boy. It just sounds really interesting hearing her talk about it. I am curious. I want to know if I'm going to like this one. I love dragons. I think they're super interesting. And I just, uh, I hope I like it. I hope I like it. I would love to see if I have the same taste as Aaron, because if I do... Then I can just listen to her for all fantasy recs, which make my life a lot easier. Okay, this one is kind of like a new adult sort of like romantic fantasy. And from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which fucking everybody and their mother has been talking about on TikTok and YouTube. I know nothing about it other than it's sexy and it's violent and it's fantasy and romance and whatnot. I don't, other than that, I don't really know. My sister-in-law read it and said it was really good. And some people have also said it's really bad, but it's like, if you like Sarah J Mass, and I do, I'm kind of trash for at this point, I'm probably going to like this. So we'll see if that holds true or not. The next one is another little slender boy, and that is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire. I have read all of these. These are all excellent books. If you want quick little novellas, the audiobooks are really good. I've listened to them all. And this one, I think, is actually, to me, the weakest of the series, but I really, really like it anyway. It's still like four and a half star read. I, I enjoyed it immensely. But basically, the... Every Heart of Doorway is the first one, and the series is called the Wayward Children series, and 
essentially it is about children who are born in our world and they end up at some point encountering a door in their life which asks, asks them to be sure and they are never sure because they're children but they go through the door anyway and they end up in another world and they spend an indeterminate amount of time there and almost consider it to be their home and then the door pops up again and they either accidentally or on purpose go through the door and end up back in our world much changed from who they were before and in the first book I cannot remember her name but she runs a school for wayward children and they all go all these kids that have had this experience their parents take them and basically dump them there because they just don't know what to do with them and so they live there and they're basically surviving and hoping that their door will open back up again so that they can return to the land that they feel like they truly belong in. Um, and they're just all really whimsical, enjoyable books. And the Across the Green Grass Fields is the most recent. I don't know if there are going to be more or not, but I'm trying to slowly accumulate them. All right, we got two more. So the last two, the first one is... The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro. I read The 10,000 Doors of January and adored that book. It was so good. A wonderful debut. And this one, I believe, is kind of like a feminist, suffragette, like Salem witch sort of situation. It takes place in 1893. And I think it's basically about a bunch of sisters who are all witchy women and they're joining the suffragists and trying to just earn rights for women, but I think that they end up being stalked by um, some kind of magical foe. I'm not really sure, but I really, other than that, I don't know much about it. And I think that it is going to be super interesting. I love the cover. Again, man, the covers are really just killing it for me lately. Um, but most, mostly the reason I picked this one was because I loved her first book so much. And I want to see if I'm going to love subsequent books that she writes. And finally, don't know why I'm doing a drum roll because eh, it's not like all that special. But the last book in my haul is Dune by Frank Herbert. This edition is gorgeous. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the teal and the orange and I just his eyes are teal and I just fucking love it my husband has read this I have not the movie is coming out at some point with good old Timothy Chalamet how do you say his name and I would like to know what it's about before I see the movie um man I can't wait to go and see movies again my husband and I are both vaccinated he gets his second shot on the 14th of April and we're actually going to be able to like go out to restaurants and go to movies y'all i have been holed up in this house for a fucking year i am so ready to go out and live again so there you have it folks that is the end of my gigantic book haul 47 books i believe unless another one snuck in there at some point before i started filming but yeah i'm i'm done for a while i put myself on a book buying ban other than my birthday and a couple of new releases that are getting ready to come out i am going to try really hard not to buy any other books if I feel like I need something, I'm going to try to go to the library or get it on audiobook. That's the goal. We'll see if I'm able to actually do it or not because, like, I'm an emotional buyer. If I have a shitty day, I want to go and buy something, which isn't good. It's either I want to go buy something or I want to eat something that's shitty for me. So hopefully I can <clears throat> abstain because I have plenty of things to read. Um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I always like watching book hauls. If you made it this far and you would like to comment, put a little stack of books emoji in your comment just to show me that you made it to the end. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great day or night, wherever you are. And just enjoy yourselves, y'all. Happy reading. Bye.